Good morning, everybody. It's so good to be here and to be here with you all. I can actually see you. It's totally amazing. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Roz, and I've been part of this church family for years. But there's nothing I like more than welcoming new people. So you're, if you're new here or if you're new on, online, you're so welcome here. And what a year it's been. I mean, we just couldn't have imagined it. And thank God that in the UK, at least, we're starting to emerge. And tomorrow is a big day because we can hug. We've got to do it cautiously, but we can hug. And we need hugs because the world and many of us um, are hurting. And the grief and the loss caused by the virus alone is huge. But then on top of that, of course, there's the economic impact because crises like these often affect those of us who live in material poverty or who are marginalised the most. And the uncertainty and the un isolation that we've all felt has left a trail of stress and anxiety. And really, it's a bit of a mental health epidemic of its own. And I work as a GP in Gateshead, and one of the great privileges of that job is that as a year goes by, I talk and listen to thousands of people. And if they're really able, and if I'm really listening, they tell me what they're really feeling and what they're really struggling with. So you get over time an incredibly intimate and privileged window into what people are really struggling with and what whole communities are walking through. And as I listen, I can hear lots of things. I can hear very real worry and stress, grief, deep loneliness, isolation, people who've been too scared to leave their homes for a whole year. I can hear people who are experiencing real problems with their mental health, despite never having struggled in that way before. And I can hear that people are longing for peace and for joy. But I can also hear that many people aren't really sure how to find it. And in the UK, at least, we're now in this place of recovery where we've been given a roadmap out of lockdown and we so need that. Um, but lots of us are also in need of a bit of help to find peace, myself included. And in, in the Bible, it says that there's a secret to being content in any and every situation. And that is a very bold claim. And I tend to naturally shy away from that kind of claim, you know, the, the secret to this and the secret to that. But what if this claim is actually true? And what if there really is a secret to be found in here? What if this kind of peace is something possible in all our lives, despite the challenges that we face? And this morning, we're going to dive into Philippians 4. A really, it's a really well-known passage, and you could, in a way, call it a bit of a roadmap into peace, a roadmap showing us the way to, the, to peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. My sister used to work in exactly this coffee bar on a very busy high street and her and three colleagues were making coffees constantly. There was always a queue and her boss used to stand there as they worked and say, make coffee, make coffee, make coffee. Don't panic. And he'd just say it over and over again, getting faster and faster. And it was just so stressful. And sometimes we can feel, end up feeling a bit the same way reading this passage. Rejoice, rejoice, be gentle, don't be anxious, pray, petition, be thankful. Now think about good things. Now do what I do. Peace, peace, don't panic. 
And sometimes we can read it a bit like this and just end up feeling a bit stressed, as if it's all a list, a list of instructions and a bit hard to actually do. But good news, God isn't like that boss. And he doesn't just stand there shouting at us. He comes to help us always. And this passage is more like a guide given by God to help us. It's a roadmap towards peace. And it gives us a way out from all the anxiety and the stress and the pressure that we can feel. And it's a roadmap for us to inner calm wherever we are and whatever's going on in our lives. Because when, when Paul wrote this, he himself was in prison. His feet were in shackles. He was totally trapped. So his own circumstances weren't exactly great at the time of writing either. And yet, despite being in chains, Paul tells us that this piece is so real and so powerful that it transcends all understanding. In other words, it's completely mind-blowing peace. It's huge, way beyond our control. You just can't get your head around this kind of peace. And even though Paul's trapped in chains, he's somehow able to say, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Peace makes you bold. It gives you courage and it helps you to reach out and live the life of love that you were created for. It's the total opposite of anxiety weighing you down and shackling you. So what is the roadmap to peace? And this morning, we're going to look at three things from the passage that direct us towards peace. Presence, party and ponder. It's easy to think that the way for us to find peace might be uh, perhaps to empty our minds, zone out, think about nothing, lie on a beach somewhere. I mean, if you offered me a beach right now, I, I would take it. <laughs> Um, but peace isn't really a sense of calm we can create for ourselves. It's not an emptiness or an emptying, it's a filling. It's a presence. It's the presence of a person, the God of peace with you and near you. Because the Lord, as James has already said this morning, the Lord is near. You're not alone. Never. And I love these very short sentences that you find in the Bible because they change everything. They're so neat. These small sentences, few words with a full stop either side, sentences like, I'm with you. Jesus wept. The Lord is near. Because, you know, you're not alone. God has a seeing heart. And it's so easy for us to feel unseen, and particularly at this time. But he notices you. He notices every little thing. He sees you. He cares for you. He's so close. He knows you. And knowing you makes him love you more, not less. When we come to a God who's this kind, and this close, our anxiety can just fall away because we're really, really loved. And coming to a God like that, he asks us to cast all the mess, all the yuck onto him, all of it. And that word cast, I love it because it's so physical, you know, cast it off. It's like a net. Throw it off. Throw all your worries onto him. And he so wants you to do that. He wants to take your worries away from you. He cares for you. And God wants to challenge us this morning. Are we living our lives knowing this love that God has for us? Do you feel his tenderness towards you? Do you know how close he is? Why don't you invite his presence into your life, even right now? Ask for his presence, even if you've never asked for it before. 
even if you've never asked for it before. Ask for God's presence to fill you. God, fill us with your presence. This morning, now, fill us, God. We need you. And as you keep asking, he'll show you his love and he'll start to give you the peace that comes from him. And as you're filled with Jesus, you'll see that the love and the gentleness that he has for you, the care that he feels for you, starts not just to flow into you, but starts to flow out of you too, out to the people around you. Let your gentleness be evident to all, at work, at home, on the street, in the shops, in church. The outward flow of your gentleness just starts to change culture, change your office, your family, the church, change the world. God, let your kingdom come through us. And the second thing that I'm going to draw out of this passage in Philippians today is this whole thing about rejoicing, is it doesn't just say it once, it gets a double mention on the roadmap to peace. Rejoice. I'll say it again. Rejoice. So really, this whole passage is under this heading, double rejoice. And we often understand that word rejoice as meaning something that happens on the inside of us, something that's quite individual, like a sort of joy bubbling up from within. And that is a really important part of it. But this is a letter that's actually been written to a whole church family. And it's not just been written to one person. So really, the challenge to rejoice is to a whole community, just like us, City Church, Newcastle. And that sounds more to me like God wants this church family to be a place of celebration, a family where there's a brilliant and massive, joyful party going on. So it's about community rejoicing on the outside, as well as individual rejoicing on the inside, because church is family, We are a family and families celebrate things. They celebrate each other's successes and achievements. They celebrate birthdays, new jobs. But more than that, good families just celebrate each other. Um, A baby smiles with joy when he sees his dad walk into the room. Parents are filled with joy and pride just even by looking at at the child. And part of being in a good family is to cherish each other, to enjoy each other, to celebrate each other every single day. And in many ways over the last year, to really celebrate each other as a family has been one of the things that we've really been missing. And if you're a baby here, uh, it's too bright, I can't see, but... If you are a baby here, you're a baby lots of us have never really even met. Rebecca, Esther, Eloise, Levi, Paul Joel, Joshua, and any other babies that are here this morning. In the last year, your amazing mums and dads have brought you into the world without many of the things that make life a lot easier at this stage, like hanging around each other's houses, drinking lots of coffee together. Family and friends just haven't even been able to come over to your house, let alone even help. And babies, I'm speaking to you, we've missed celebrating you all and watching you grow. And then there's the weddings. Those of us who've got married in the last year, Sam and Beth, Mark and Louise, Sam and Naomi, Whoopi and Joseph, Josiah and Lizzie, Joel and Asta. The parties that have been had celebrating you have just not been the same, or even not been at all. We've had live streamed weddings, Zoom Christmas parties as well, where we play quizzes and, uh, and watch your friends and colleagues eat and drink on the same it's, screen. It's, it's just not been the same for you. We've missed celebrating together and we've missed rejoicing with you all. And of course, it's not just babies and weddings. There's the sadder forms of celebration and shared grief that we've missed, really missed being together for two because the hugging and the holding have been restricted. There are dear people from this church who've died in this time. Sarah and George, both so full of light and love. Families, we've missed standing with you in your grief. 
not being able to grieve in, even in the same room or celebrate with you the total gift that those people were to you and to the whole world. You know, even in the deepest of grief, the Lord is near. And perhaps even especially in grief. And in one way or another, we've all experienced somehow grief and losses and missed opportunities at this time. And God wants you to know that in that, he is near. The Lord is near. And in his wisdom, he's not just near, but he's put people near us too. He's brought you into a family, his family, his body, and you can find peace here, whoever you are. Even if it's your first time here, you can find peace here in these people and in us. And I think one of the things that I've missed the most, and I'm still slightly missing, (laughs) is being in this room with you all to worship. And our worship team has done the most incredible job in the last year. You know, that first early video where the whole team sang that song, Goodness of God. Oh, (laughs) that for me was one of the standout moments of the last year of church life online. You know, it, it came on and, oh, just tears started streaming down my face just to see lots of people, the whole worship team, all of them singing on their little screens. It was just so, so good. But amazing though our worship team is, um, I've really missed all our voices singing together because being lost together um, as a community in wonder and awe at the beauty and the presence of God, just singing with hundreds of other people, the sheer joy of that, the sheer joy of being with you as we sing and sing and sing. And I've missed that so much. I'm longing for it. I'm still longing for it. Uh, I'm longing to have that party with you. So peace comes not just as we empty our minds, but as we're filled, filled with the presence of a person, Jesus, and he is near. Peace comes as we party, as we rejoice together in community and worship, rejoicing in who God is and whatever's going on in our lives. And peace comes as we rejoice in each other, in our ch- rejoice in our church family, love and care for each other and the people and the city around us. And finally, peace comes to us as we ponder in our mind and in our thoughts, hidden though they are, choosing to rejoice whatever our circumstances, choosing to rejoice on the very inside of us, in our thinking and in our pondering. And this is where the rubber really hits the road. And it's very much easier to say than to actually do, because the battle for our minds is absolutely huge. How on earth do we do this? How do we rejoice in the hidden places? Well, we can see in this passage in Philippians 4 that there are some transactions going on. There's some stuff to give to God and some stuff to take in from God. And God's asking us to give what we're worried about to God. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. He wants He wants it all. He's really clear. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Talk to him. Talk to the one who's near. Ask for what you need in the same way that you would to a friend that's in this room. Thanking them for their love and for their kindness. I'm so grateful to be your friend And peace comes as you talk with God in this way. But the passage also tells us to take some stuff in. And it's telling us to take stuff in that's in here. Whatever is noble, true, noble and right. Think about such things. Ponder. And these words, true, noble and right, are like codes. 
And when true, noble and right are mentioned in the Bible, it's talking about the word of God. Um, it's a bit, reading the Bible is a, a bit like eating. You take food into your mouth, and I'm getting medical here, but, well, it's not that medical, but chew it and then you swallow. You take the food right inside yourself where it's processed and the nutrients over time are absorbed and built into the structure of, of your body. They bring growth and they bring life and keep you alive. And it's the same with this book. This book is incredible because there's no other book like it. It's actually alive, a book that's alive, it's active, and its words have the power to speak into any and every situation that you find yourself in. They're like food. These words are like food. Are you hungry? Well, here's some food. Go to this book to fill you, satisfy the hunger. Take the words and ingest them, chew them, swallow. And then the truth in here will be absorbed. Incredible nutrients taken in. Incredible truths become part of who you are, part of your structure, your skeleton, what's, what's holding you up. And peace comes to me as I open this book. And I've learned that now. These living and active words that reveal Jesus. They're words that bring healing and hope. And I, I love to pray before I read. It's like a little kind of exciting thing to do. God, come and speak to me now from these words, from this book. And it, it can just blow you away. So how do you find peace? What's the secret? Don't empty your brain. Fill it. Think, ponder, think about what you find in here. Think about Jesus, who he was, what he said, what he did. And think about this, that he died. He died a lonely, isolated death. He took on the burden of the whole world because he cared so deeply for you. He was isolated so that you could be brought into this family, his family. He had his peace removed so that you might have it today. And he died so that you might not know, just know peace, but freedom, joy, and complete forgiveness too. And as the band comes back up, why don't we all stand? And the Lord is near, so why don't we just close our eyes and just might want to open your hands before God? Because we're ready to meet you, Jesus. You're, you are here. You're near. And let's open our hearts to him this morning. Jesus, we open our hearts to you. Jesus, come close to us this morning. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome here. And if you are here this morning or if you're online and you want to come to him for the very first time, if you want to know him and the peace that comes with his presence, he's here. He's here to welcome you. His arms are wide open towards you. Run. And if you're here and you're weighed down, you can feel the burden. If you're weighed down with worry and the pressures of the last year, why don't you come to God now as we worship together and somehow, like a net, cast all those things out of you and onto Jesus. Why don't you come now to God who cares for you and be filled with his peace? Jesus, 
we cast our anxieties and our burdens onto you. And as we worship, let's rejoice. Let's celebrate. Let's party. Let's move. Let's clap. Even if we can't sing, let's worship. Whatever's going on in our lives, let's rejoice. And as we do that, let the mind-blowing peace of God that transcends all understanding come and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.